Hello, my name is Michael Crusoe. I'm your CWL project leader and one of the Common Workflow Language co-founders. I'm here to talk at the CWL conference about just a little introduction to the CWL project and quickly show some of the new stuff in the latest release of the CWL standards. So a little background on how the CWL project started and what did we care about? Uh, we care about workflows, computational workflows, you know, getting stuff done with computers when in the context of large-scale analysis. So I come from a bioinformatics background, as did many of our co-founders, and we definitely used and needed workflows. And many scientific areas have this need as well. Um, and while there's many, many scientific workflow systems out there, we know of over 280, not so many of them are you know, active, adopted, and sustained. And even those who are, you're sort of stuck in one system. Before CWL, there was no way to port or extend your workflow to another system or platform. So as people writing and using workflows, specifically multilingual workflows, which means the steps can be written in any computer language, programming language like Python or C or whatever, we, there was just a big need for having a, a standard to allow portability between these systems and between vendors. And so that's what the CBL project was formed and kind of grew into this standards development organization, really just focused on these multilingual workflows. Um, so CBL eventually became uh, part of an existing nonprofit in the US, a charity called the Software Freedom Conservancy. And so we now describe our, ourselves this way. We support the open consensus-based standards for command line data analysis workflows and tools. And specifically, we support the, both the pre-standard process, the standardization process itself, and the post-standards lifecycle, right? So we support creating a place to create, to come together and discuss ideas, try out new things. Um, we, st we support making a standard. So it's writing it down, editing it, writing conformance tests, sending things out for review and publishing the standard. And we support afterwards, just like this conference, um, promoting the standards, connecting people, uh, tracking it. And of course, there's gonna be uh, deficits. We wanna track those and put that in for the next round of the standards efforts. So CWL, so that's the project, that's the goals of the project. CBEL, right, is this open standard. It started as a grassroots effort at a code fest back in 2014. And as a standard, it's not something you purchase or install. It's something that's implemented by different workflow systems. So we deliver the standard, the specification, you know, a document, but we also deliver a, a, a schema that's computer readable and that test suite. We find this is really important. The group also develops a reference implementation called, of the standards called CWL tool. And there's many academic and commercial production implementations available as well. So CDBL aims to make uh, to provide portability and scalability across a variety of software and deployment environments. We really encourage the use of software containers uh, in their engines like Docularity or Sing Docker or Singularity. And while it was designed with bioinformatics in mind, we worked really hard to keep it not specific to even the life sciences. We're really happy to see CBL being used in medical imaging, astronomy, high energy physics, machine learning, and uh, lately, geospatial. So the standards are actually two standards in one. There's the command line tool standard for describing that basic unit on the command line. What is the tool? What are the inputs and outputs? And then the workflow description standard connects those two together into the workflow graph. So some people use, uh, some projects will use both standards, some will use just one, and that's great by us. One of our main focuses is on portability. And you know, so it's true. You can use write CWL on your laptop or desktop machine and run it on a, you know, a local grid computing cluster, cloud, you know, private cloud or public cloud. And using any of these um, infrastructures you see represented on the side here uh, are supported by various uh, implementations of CWL. And it's the same description. So you don't need to rewrite it. Once it works, it's gonna work in these different environments. This is a kind of a main feature for us. Diving a bit into the technical details, CWL is written in YAML or JSON. 
And though we do include fields to be kind of useful to people. So there's documentation fields. Um, you can say which software was expected, not just the container name. We're really explicit, though, on what are the exact inputs and the exact outputs. And this gives us a nice modularity and also encourages reuse. We designed for high throughput um, grid and cloud computing, which means the different steps in a SIBO workflow don't, um, can be run uh, in parallel if the workflow design allows for that. And, but you don't put the data movement in the, your CWL workflow. That's handled by the workflow engine. Uh, also, in a technical layer, we allow for and really encourage ex uh, extensions written by you know, vendors and users. And this actually helps us grow without hurting portability. So on this slide, I'm showing you two CWL descriptions. They're both sort of technically complete. They both work. Um, the one I left is obviously much simpler. It's a demonstration that you can actually add additional features over time to sort of improve your description. So you can start with just one that gets the job done, then add documentation, um, you know, which file format to expect, which container is recommended, how to calculate you know, the amount of memory uh, is needed and how much disk space to reserve. Um, so it's a progressive, uh, you can do this sort of progressive enhancement, making things better over time. The data, was, the data model for CWL is all about the command line tool, running something at the terminal. That's how we're able to be compatible with many different computer programming languages. So it's all about what are the inputs do we expect, and then how we're going to create that command line uh, tool invocation. So as for, for types, we support strings and numbers, references to files and directories, complex types with records. Um, we can do arrays and combine this up you know, with, with unions and optional components as well. Um, your file inputs and outputs, you can also kind of constrain a bit further and say it, it must be this particular file format or it is going to produce this particular file format. But the source of those file formats, we don't say uh, in the standard what you should use. That's up to each particular community. So in bioinformatics, we typically use the EDAM file formats. You know, other fields will use their own sources of file format identifiers. We're very compatible with linked data, if that's something important to you, and you can export CWL documents um, as linked data. For provenance reporting, uh, we provide recommendations on how to use existing provenance standards. So go check out CWL Prov, which is linked in from these slides. And the object model, um, in general, we really try to enable lots of uh, optimizations by the engines. So we want to keep en um, infrastructure specific details out of the workflow description and let engines handle that. And so, for example, we do enable cost and data location aware scheduling, caching, streaming of data between steps. Um, another important feature of CWL is these conformance tests I mentioned. We provide hundreds of them and uh, you should use them as you evaluate uh, vendors of CWL and make sure that they are providing, they support all the parts of the standard that you care about. Because of the richness of the object model in CWL, we are able, many implementations like the reference implementation are able to catch validation uh, errors up front. So I consider that a feature as well. I mentioned data locality, uh, and this is in CWL. Data is not just a path, a, a string. We really have a sense of it. We have an identifier, and this allows the engines to optimize uh, placement of data and compute um, and also do enhanced provenance. This also combines well with resource matchmaking. I need this many computer cores, this much RAM, this much disk space to run this job to um, best utilize the resources you have available. Uh, so I mentioned having the existence of extensions. There is, uh, if you want to learn more about how to make extensions to CWL, you can check out this issue on GitHub that's uh, linked to from the slides, uh, where we're, there's a proposal to provide uh, more narrow types. So it's a string, but it must be this value, or it's a number, but no bigger than that, or no um, smaller than this. And uh, you can learn more about the enhancement process and see how that works in action. Um, and this also gives more detail, a bit of an overview of how to do a community or vendor extension. Really appreciate them. We, it's actually how the standard moves forward in the future. We want people to propose new new features to go implement it, try it out, 
um, and then kind of report back to us and see how that worked for consideration for inclusion in a future version of the CBEL standards. So the standards, we do release new ones over time. We just had our most recent release last August, version 1.2, very excited about this. The major feature, of course, being workflow level conditionals. So that's deciding to go to a different next step based on the results of this step or other steps. Um, and we're seeing implementation of these new features already in the reference runner and two of the um, open source production implementations. And we know implementation of CBL 1.2 is coming very soon now for, the, uh, for some of the other commercial implementations as well. Um, of course, you may be concerned about having a new version of the standard. We do guarantee forward compatibility. You can always upgrade old versions, uh, files written in older versions of the CBL standards to newer versions without losing anything. Um, we have a script that does that, and many runners just will do it automatically for you. Um, as for participating in the CBO community, you're already doing that today by participating in this conference. So thank you for that. We hope to see you again, whether it's on our forum, in our Gitter chat room, on social media. Of course, we have weekly video chats we'd love to see you at, uh, though they're kind of timed better for Europe, Middle East, Africa, and the Americas. Though we do have a, an occasional Asia-Pacific focused uh, video chat but that, that needs a new facilitator. So let us know if you'd like to help out with that. If you'd like to participate in CWL here in the European Union, where I'm based, there is a funding opportunity available. So check out this link and let me know. I'll help you out with your uh, application. So just to summarize, the Common Workflow Language is a vendor neutral open standard. It's a community first project as well. And this is really important to us. CWL was designed with an open and transparent governance structure. Uh, CBEL improves interoperability, portability, and it increases reusability and reproducibility. Use of CDBL and any workflow approach enables parallelization and scale. And the CBEL standards are supported by an ecosystem of tools, libraries, and editor plugins. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to CBEL standards. Um, we might have time for some questions. If not, catch me online. We can talk some more.